This is the semester two geometry exam review. So we're looking at GH as 7P minus 1. We're looking at BC four P minus three and we want to know what is the length. So as we look here something we would need to know is that B was the midpoint of HJ and C is the midpoint of JG. If that was the case then this would be half the size of that. So BC is going to equal half HG. So we got 4P minus 3 that equals half of 7P minus 1. Now I could distribute the half through or I could multiply by 2. So that turns this into 8p minus 6 by multiplying by 2. Now I can subtract my 7p. I can add my 6. And that's going to give me p equals 5. And if we want to know what bc is, that's going to be 20 minus 3, which is 17. I'm going to write an equation of a line that's passing through this point and is perpendicular to that one. Well, if you're perpendicular, you're going to be opposite reciprocal. This is passing through, so this is your x and the y. So we have negative 4. Opposite reciprocal is going to be the flip of the fraction and a change of the sign. 8 is our x. We wouldn't know what the b value is. That's what we're trying to figure out. So this can reduce to become a 2. So we've got negative 4 equals 6 plus b, so negative 10 equals b. So our equation is going to be y equals 3 fourths x minus 10. We'll tell if the given points are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So we're going to look at our slopes. The slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. might want that on a note card. So we have 5 minus 1. Those are the y values over the x values. Negative 4 minus negative 1. That's 4 over negative 3. Okay, so that's line number 1. doesn't mean anything. We need to compare it. So then we do 1 minus 5. That's the y values. And 5 minus 8. So that's negative 4 over negative 3. Yeah, I'm just checking my signs and looking over it one more time. y minus y and x minus x. This was y minus y and x minus x. So this is positive four thirds. All they are, are opposites of each other, so that would be considered neither. They're not opposite reciprocals and they're not the same thing. We're going to show that this shape is a parallelogram because the diagonals bisect each other.
Okay, so I fired out my points. So we're going to show that the diagonals bisect each other. So we need to find the midpoint of point B and point D. B and D, the midpoint, would be X plus X divided by 2 and Y plus Y divided by 2. So that's going to be negative 1 over 2 and 9 over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. That doesn't quite seem right. Well, negative 5 plus 6 is actually positive 1. It's not negative 1. It's positive 1. So there's my point. That would be right here, and that looks good. All right. And then we're going to try the point from A to C. So that is X plus X divided by 2 and Y plus y divided by 2. That's going to be 1 half. That's going to be 9 halves. So it's the same midpoint. Same midpoint. So diagonals bisect each other. Given this point and that point, we're going to find the slope. Well, we know the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is your x1, y1, and x2, y2. We could call that 2r. minus 4r over negative 6m minus 2m that gives us negative 2r over negative 8m so the negatives make a positive the 4 is on bottom so we get 1 4 Okay, find the midpoint. The formula for a midpoint is x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. So you'd want that midpoint formula on your note card. So x1 plus x2, since we're plusing a negative, we could say that y1 plus y2 this gives us negative 4m divided by 2 and 6r divided by 2 that's going to be negative 2m3r and the distance distance formula is x2 minus x1 squared y2 minus y1 squared. You'd want that in your note card. So x2 is negative 6m minus x1 and y2 minus y1 so that's negative 8 m squared which is going to be 64 m squared and this is going to be negative 2 r squared so that's 4 r squared and there's actually we can huh because these have a factor, have a factor of 4 in them if you get technical. It 
So we have 16m squared plus r squared. So you could say that this is 2 16n squared plus r squared. You can't take the square root of that because it has a plus that's in between it. We have points A, B, C, and D on this quadrilateral. So that's A. That's B. So I have all the points in here. Now what we want to do if we could show that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other, then we can determine if it's a parallelogram. So AC, the slope of AC, 0 minus 4 and 2 minus a negative 2, which is negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. And if they're perpendicular, then this one's going to be positive 1. So I guess we can count it even. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So okay, let's do this math again. What's up with this? This shouldn't be a negative slope. Oh, I guess I did that one already. I did AC. So that was negative 4, positive 4, which gives us this. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's 6 over 6, which is 1. So we know that AC is perpendicular to BD. So we know that ABCD is a parallelogram. know that for sure. Now what type of parallelogram is it? There's a chance that this could be a rhombus. So for this to be a rhombus, the diagonals have to be perpendicular. We did that. Okay, I think I did this backwards. So if you're perpendicular, then you're going to be a rhombus. And if they diagonals bisect each other, then you're going to be a parallelogram. So let's show that they bisect each other. So AC, so they have the same midpoint. Negative 2 plus 2 over 2 A to C and 4 plus 0 over 2, so that's 0 over 2, 4 over 2, so it's 0, 2. That apparently is the halfway point. And for AC, well, that's actually the one I already did. I keep thinking this is A, but this is AC. So now we need to do BD. So we've done AC's midpoint. Now we need to do BD. That is 3 plus negative 3 over 2, which is 0. And 5 plus a negative 1 over 2, so they have the same midpoint. Same midpoint, so parallelogram, these are perpendicular, the sides are perpendicular so we know it's a rhombus, it has an H in it. 
So A, B, C, D has diagonals that are bisecting each other and perpendicular. So it's a rhombus. Our next page, similarity. You can prove that the triangles are similar. Can we? So what we're trying to do We're going to look at side angle side. So we're going to take the small triangle over the large triangle, which is a length of 20. And the small triangle, that's 21, over 35. So this is going to reduce 4 goes into that 3 times, 4 goes into that 5 times, 7 goes into that 3 times, 7 goes into that 5 times. So they are the same reduced fraction. So yes, similar, similarity statement would be triangle. QCT is similar to triangle MCP, and we did that by side, angle, side. Both of those triangles have angle C as a common angle. In this case, not enough info because we don't have any relationships to sides. We know that we have two sets of angles, but you can't prove, oh, we can't prove triangles congruent this way, but can we prove them similar? So actually, I gotta back up here. I gotta remember our rules. Our rules say that for similar, we know that triangle X, Y, Z is similar. That was one tick mark, so E, and then the no tick mark, which was N, and then X, Y, Z, so the two tick mark was third. That's our similarity statement, and we did that by angle, angle, similarity. This one here, the small shape, to the small, so that's four over six. That reduces to two thirds. The medium, which is six, and the medium, which is nine. Three goes into each of those, two thirds. So that's good. And then we're down to our last set. I'm afraid this isn't gonna work. the small to the small we if we can't tell with that we know that 6 divided by 9 gives us 0 0.666 7 divided by 10.5 gives us the exact same ratio so that does reduce to 2 thirds so we know that triangle, short, medium, and long. So we'll say Y, X, Z is similar to triangle R, P, Q. And that was side, 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 similarity. 
And then this last one is smaller number, goes with the smaller number. So that number there. Alright, I think it's 4.8. I'm going to read it. So, a little zooming in there I did, 4.8 over 8, and we can compare that with 6 over, is that a 10? Okay, one way that we can do this is we can cross multiply, we get to number 48. We can cross multiply, we get to number 48. That shows us that the two ratios, two fractions, are equivalent to each other. And they also have the angle in between those two sides the same. So triangle HJK is similar to triangle RST and that was by side angle side similarity we're going to use the given information to determine if the lines are parallel well, to do that, the lines will be parallel. These two will be parallel if these are divided proportionally. So we have 3 over 6, and we're asking to see if that is 4 over 8. And a way to compare is 24 equals 24. So yes, AB is parallel. BD because this line is called the mid segment is dividing the sides proportionally. Here's some trigonometry. So if we're trying to find our one side. We're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. So 15 squared equals 9 squared plus x squared. 225. When we subtract that, we have 225 minus our 81. And when we take the square root, of our answer we get 12 so x squared equals 144 we take the square root of 144 and that gives us 12 here we have 3 6 and x so x squared equals 3 squared plus 6 squared Notice that this one, the hypotenuse, is our unknown. But for this one, the leg was our unknown. So you need to be sure to set up the equation in the right format. That's 45, and we can take the square root of 45 which is known as 9 times 5, which you can take the square root of 9, but not of the 5. To find the 
area of our triangle, we need to know the base. So we can do half a base times height. But to do that, we're going to do opposite over adjacent. We're going to be using Sokotoa. And that helps us remember that we have the adjacent. Nope, we have opposite over adjacent. So we're going to use tangent of 31 equals opposite over adjacent. We put this over 1, cross multiply, and we get x, and then we divide by the tangent of 31. So that's 17 divided by tangent of 31. You need to be sure, you go to mode, that you are in degree mode when you use trigonometry. We were. So it's 28 to 9. But that's not what they're asking for. We're going to take 28.29 and we're going to times that by 17 and divide that by 2. Half a base times height. So the area equals half of 17 and this 28.29 which is approximately 240.49 these are units square square units because we're talking about area all right if we know the hypotenuse is 15 and the leg is 12 To find the area, we need to know what this missing side is. So hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. I believe we tried this one already. So this is 81. Because we have 225 minus 144 gives us 81. And when we take the square root of our 81, we get 9. So this side is 9. So now the area is going to equal half of the perpendicular parts. 9 times 12. You might want that in your note card. That area of a triangle is going to equal half of small b, because that's just the base of the triangle, times the height. Okay, and the base and the height are always perpendicular. So we can take half of the 12, and that's 54. And these are centimeters squared, so square centimeters. In our next page, we have a garden. We're going to find the perimeter and the area. So this is 88 and 137. We have to solve for x, so this is a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean Theorem. So 137 squared, that's the hypotenuse, equals 88 squared plus our x squared. So 137 squared gives us 18,000. And our 88 squared gives us 7,744. We're going to subtract those two numbers. Take that one and minus that one. That gives us this number.
and then we can take the square root. That gives us 105. So the perimeter is going to be 105 plus 88 plus 137. The perimeter is 105 plus 88 plus 137, and that gives us 330. And the area, like we talked about, is half the base perpendicular sides, or a base in the height. So 105 times 88. And you're welcome to use a calculator with that. 105 times 88 divided by 2, or times a half, gives us 4,620 square inches. Perimeter is just the length, so that's just inches, but area are square inches. We're going to decide whether the numbers can be represented the sides of a triangle. And we know that you can represent the sides of a triangle if the two smaller sides add up to be more than the largest. So this is adding up 26 plus 35 is 61. The two smaller sides do not add up to be greater than the longest. So this is no triangle doesn't make a triangle. It's not long enough to make a triangle. Here, we could take our calculator and say 9 root 2. No, let's try that again. 9 the square root of 2. That's 12. So we know that the two smaller sides add up to 13, and this adds up to 12, 7. So yes, this can make a triangle. So once we know that 5 plus 8 is greater than 9 root 2, so yes, a triangle. Now to determine what type of triangle it is, we play the Pythagorean theorem game, 9 root 2 squared, and we compare that with 5 squared and 8 squared. So this is going to be 81 times 2, and we're comparing that with 25 and 64. So 81 times 2, that should be 9 root 2 squared. And that's 162. And we're going to compare that with 25 and 64, and we see that that's much smaller. So c squared is greater, so this is going to be an obtuse triangle. Here we know the two smaller sides add up to be bigger than the largest. So 16 plus 30 is greater than 34. So yes, a triangle. Then we do Pythagorean theorem game. So 34 squared and compare that with 16 squared and 30 squared. So 34 squared, 16 squared plus 30 squared, 
you see that they're exactly the same. So we have 1156 that equals 1156. So we have right triangle. You might want that in your note card. If the longest side squared equals the two shorter sides squared, the sum of the two shorter sides squared, then it's a right triangle. If the longer side squared is greater than the sum of the other two sides squared, then it's obtuse. And if it's less than, it's acute. Here are the special right triangle rules. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Well, the rule that we could say is hypotenuse equals the leg times root 2. If we have 5 root 2 and our leg is x, we're going to divide by root 2. And we're going to get x equals 5. Here's a 60 degree angle. So that makes this a 30 degree angle the short leg. So we know that the hypotenuse equals the short leg times 2. So our hypotenuse is x. The short leg is 4 root 3 times 2. So x is going to be, you multiply the same type of numbers, so that's 8 root 3. And then to figure out y, that is the long leg equals the short leg times root 3. Well, the long leg is y. The short leg is 4 root 3 times root 3. So when you square a square root, you get what's inside. So this is 4 times 3, which is 12. So y is 12 and x was 8 root 3. And we should be able to show that 8 root 3 is bigger than 12. There it is, definitely bigger than 12. So there's our hypotenuse. Here, this would be a 45-45-90 triangle. So our hypotenuse equals the leg times root 2. So we divide by root 2. So x equals 7, and y is also going to be 7. We know that to short leg, you're going to find the long leg by multiplying the short leg by root 3. So that means if you're going to come to the short leg, you're going to divide it. So this is 6, and the hypotenuse is 2 times. This is a 30-60-90 triangle, so the short leg is half the hypotenuse. Okay, from angle R, from that point of view, this is your opposite side, this is your hypotenuse, this is your adjacent. So when we do sine, we're thinking about Sokotoa. So sine of R is opposite over hypotenuse. We want to see that as a decimal also. 15 divided by 25 is 0.6. And then we have the cosine of R, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 20 divided by 25, that's 0.8. And then the tangent of R is the opposite over adjacent.
13.75. So we did it as a reduced fraction. Reduced fraction, 5 goes into that 3 times. So 3 fifths. 5 goes in there 4 times. So 4 fifths. And 5 goes into that 3 times. So those are your reduced fractions. And these are your decimals. So using Sokotoa, want that on your note card. That's opposite over adjacent. That's tangent of 53. 17 over x. We cross multiply. That gives us x times the tangent of 53 equals 17. So then we divide by the tangent of 53. That's 17 divided by the tangent of 53. That gives me 12.8. Here, this is our opposite in our hypotenuse. It's across from the 90. So it's not a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so we can't use any of those rules. So this is sine of 39 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Three over 1, cross multiply. So that's going to be D, and we're going to kind of switch those. We're going to divide. So that's going to be 37 divided by the sine of 39. Just like over here, we divide it. We switch those. We divide it by the tangent of 53. We have to divide by the sine of 39. Fifty-eight, seventy-nine. Here we have a shadow of a lighthouse it is 19 feet and the angle is 75. Find the height. So the height is this length. So this is again the tangent of 75 equals opposite over adjacent. So we cross multiply and x is going to be 19 times the tangent of 75. You need to be sure you're in degree mode. So you want to be sure you're in degree mode. Another way you can tell you're in degree mode is the sine of 30 is going to be 0.5. That's another way to test it. You might want that on your note card. But the height is Simplify a radical. This is 25 times 3. We know that the square root of 25 is 5. So that's 5 root 3. Here, we're able to reduce. We get 2 over the square root of 3 but we're not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. So we have to rationalize the denominator. We multiply straight across, so that's 2 root 3. And when you square a square root, you get the number inside. You can test that with your calculator. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 should give us the number 3.
we're going to find the measurement of angle A. So again, we're using Sokotoa. Opposite over adjacent. You should label that. So that's tangent from angle A is equaling 37 over 29. So what we're going to say is the measurement of angle A is tangent inverse of 37 over 29. So we use the inverse to solve for an angle. To get the degree, we need the inverse. You need to be sure you're in degree mode. So tangent of 37 divided by 29. That's 51.9. 51.9 is approximately 52 degrees. Over here, this would be your opposite. This would be your hypotenuse because it's across from the 90. So that means we're going to use sine of A equals 7 over 18. So the measurement of angle A is sine inverse of 7 over 18. And that's 22.88. Twenty-two point eighty-eight, which is approximately the nearest angle. It says the nearest degree was twenty-three degrees. So here we're going to solve the right triangle. If this is ninety, we know that the measurement of angle V is 49 together they add up to 90 so 90 plus 90 is 180 then we can do opposite over adjacent so the tangent of 51 equals 14 over md so we multiply, so MD is going to equal 14 divided by the tangent of 51. That's 11.33. And we can figure out this sign by opposite over hypotenuse. And again, we switch those two. So it's 14 divided by sine of 51. That's 18.0. And that's the longest side because it's the hypotenuse. So here we can do Pythagorean theorem. So AC squared equals 16 squared plus 20 squared. So AC squared equals 656. Say we can round to the nearest tenth. So let's just test that all out. 16 squared plus 20 squared and take the square root of our answer gives us 25.6 that makes sense because the hypotenuse is always the longest side opposite over adjacent so tangent of A 
is opposite over adjacent. So the measurement of A is tangent inverse of 16 over 20. And that gives us 38 0.65, so that would be like 38.7 degrees if we're rounding to the nearest tenth. And then the measurement of angle C is going to be 90 minus 38.7. 90 minus our previous answer gives us 51.3. Alright, last question. Which side is the longest in triangle ABC? Well, if that's 55 and that's 52, 55 plus 52, that's 107. So 180 minus 107 leaves me with 73. And this is 73 degrees. So the angle that is the largest, the side opposite, the largest angle is the longest side. The side opposite, the largest angle is the longest side. So here would be A, B. That would be A, B. That would probably have a line above it because it's a segment A, B. Alright, end this video there. Good luck.